Aspartame. Hello, Humbros, and welcome to my channel. So, I created a cola wine a while ago now, and I've been meaning to do the follow on videos, but every time I bought the tasty carbonated drinks of loveliness, um, I would drink them because they are very, very tasty and I love them. But they then bought in the sugar tax and as you can see, there is four liters of iron brew which I haven't drank. And considering iron brew used to be my favorite drink, that's saying something. So um, on the one hand, we've got iron brew to brew with. On the other hand, iron brew it just isn't the same and it's not as good as it used to be. So, let's make it good again. <laughs> so previously, when I did my cola wine, I didn't need to add sugar to it. It was, it had plenty of sugar in there. These four liters of iron brew only contain 188 grams of sugar. That's less than 200 grams of sugar. The rest is made up in artificial sweetener perfectly fine for home brewing, not what you want in a carbonated drink. So we're going to have to adjust it with sugar. Now, I got some comments from my previous wine, which I keep referring to, so the link's up there. And one of the things you wanted to see was it to be froze distilled using freezer refraction to concentrate it down. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna be adding a whole kilo of sugar to this, so it should come out somewhere around the 13-ish percent, which is nothing to be sniffed at. This should be pretty good. Now, some of it is going to be the froze distilled, some of it is going to be carbonated and turned back into an alcoholic, basically WKD or Wicked or whatever one of those teeny buffer drinks, but with some actual percentage in it. So let's do this. So everything is pretty much set up and ready to go. Our pan doesn't need to be sterile, it just needs to be clean. I have a wooden spoon so I don't scratch my lovely stainless steel pot. But at the same time, it's gonna get sterilized, so it doesn't matter. So step one, it's pretty simple. We're gonna take our iron brew. Oh, that's gassy. Yeah, it doesn't smell the same. I'm just gonna take a little, little bit out. Ah, uh, childhood memories. Cheers. That doesn't taste right. Yeah. So, in goes our iron brew. Lovingly caressed inside here. Now we just turn on our hob. And we're gonna wait until this comes up to the boil. So our iron brew concoction is just coming up to the boil. Now I have been giving it a cheeky stir with my wooden spoon to degas it. It is surprising how much CO2 stays in the liquid. So a cheeky stir to remove the CO2 and also to stop any sugars that are left um, from caramelizing to the bottom of the pan. So I'm now just gonna to continue to boil this for about five minutes. So this has been boiling away now for five minutes, so I can turn it off. And that should be all of the preservatives being driven off into the steam, which has steamed up all my windows. And it's lovely and warm in here. So since the liquid is now hot, we can add in our sugar. I didn't wanna add it in during the boil, uh, mainly because I don't want the sugars to caramelize because that does happen. So in goes our whole kilo of the finest granulated sugar. Yep. That's how iron brew should taste. So <laughs> enough for the iron brew puns. I'm also gonna add in my yeast nutrient now. It's just gonna make it easier. So because I am brewing iron brew and a lot of sugar, I'm gonna be using two teaspoons of my yeast nutrient. This will make sure there is plenty of nutrient in here for the yeast to do the job and ferment cleanly and purely. 
And now, let's just give this a stir to dissolve in all of our sugar and yeast nutrients. The joys of hot water, it's already done. So, I've got my demijohn over in the corner, which I've been bleaching because I haven't used it in ages and it was looking pretty gnarly. So I'm gonna go and rinse and clean that out and get everything ready. And uh, I can cool this down in the sink once I'm done. So I'll be back once this is all done. So I finished sterilizing my disgusting, dirty old demijohn, which has been kicking around doing nothing. And my airlock, my funnel, my worktop has been re-sterilized. Then once it was all sterilized using my bleach and washing up liquid and rinsed, I then put my boiling hot magma iron brew into a cold water bath, which basically just means dumping it in the sink with cold water. So it's now time to put this in and we get to see what the potential alcohol is. So since my side is sterilized, use my cheeky smell. I won't need the spoon anymore so I can... Mm, actually tastes quite nice now. See, sweetener is bad for you. So let's put this bad boy in here. That is, uh, yep, that, that is definitely orange. <laughs> so since, it's actually, it's, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So our iron brew is now in here. And since I know there's quite a lot of sugar, I don't mind sticking this in. I should be able to get the hydrometer back out. It's already cooled. And since we had to use the funnel to pour it all in, it's already been aerated. Though, it's not as important as you would think. I put my hydrometer in and it's now reading. Actually, it is reading 1.100, which is pretty high, considering how little sugar there was supposed to be already in there. So 1 100 is about 16%, which is 3% more than I was expecting. Now, that could be, there's a little bit more sugar and there was an error in my calculation. That's possible. Or the fact that we've got sweetener in here changes the density of the water. We're gonna have to wait and see how it finishes to see if that's the case or not. So, I thought it was going to be around 13% and this is reading 16, so that's a 3% difference. Hmm. Odd. So, what I'm going to be using is a cheeky high alcohol dessert yeast. Oh yeah. So, let us pop some of this in. Just a little sprinkle. You don't have to go nutty with it. Everything is super sterile so the yeast will propagate and do its own thing. Obviously, you can add more yeast if you want. That was one of the questions I got asked. It will just be quite vigorous, which can lead to a bit of puking. And I like to uh, do my homebrew easily. So there we go. And in theory, this is now done. So we're gonna put this to one side and let the ginger juice do its thing. So I hope you join me for the uh, part two of this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos, and of course, subscribe if you feel like it. See you later, guys. Carry on homebrew. It's so gingery. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so, there's some other links to videos down below, and of course the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. See ya.